In the glittering blue waters of the Mediterranean, a team of divers are researching a historic stretch of coast near Israel. There, they stumble upon something incredible the wrecks of two lost ships that sunk many years ago. But this is just the beginning. The closer they look, the more impressive the discovery becomes. Archaeologists in Israel uncovered two long-lost shipwrecks with treasure. Near the ancient city of Caesarea, the treacherous harbor has claimed a number of unfortunate vessels. And over the years, underwater archaeologists have returned time and time again to the region, slowly uncovering the secrets of the past. But in December 2021 the Israel Antiquities Authority revealed one of its most exciting finds yet. Hundreds of years ago, when Caesarea was still a bustling Roman port, a ship laden with treasure sank beneath the waves. And centuries later, during the Mamluk Sultanate era, a second vessel met with the same fate. Now, archaeologists have uncovered their remains and retrieved the riches once carried within their holds. Located on the coast of what is now Israel, between the cities of Haifa and Tel Aviv, Caesarea has seen plenty of history over the years. Initially settled upon by the Phoenicians, it was expanded between 22 and 10 BC during the reign of Herod the Great. Having constructed a great city called Samaria further inland, the king of Judea needed a port to bring goods in and out of his new metropolis. Named in honor of Herod's patron, Caesar Augustus, Caesarea was home to a mighty Roman navy, and in the 6th century AD, it was seen as the capital of Judea. That, of course, put it right at the heart of the rapidly developing Christian religion. In fact, the city appears in the New Testament of the Bible on numerous occasions. On one occasion, Caesarea is named as the place where the Apostle Paul is incarcerated, just as the prophet Agabus had predicted. Elsewhere in the Bible, the city is the setting for the baptism of Cornelius, a Roman centurion. According to the experts, this event was a major turning point for the emerging religion. This was the first instance of a non-Jew being accepted into the Christian community Jacob Sharvet, an archaeologist with the Israel Antiquities Authority, or IAA, explained in a statement dated December 2021. From here, the Christian religion began to be disseminated across the world. Caesarea, then, played a crucial role in the development of a belief system that still holds sway around the globe today. Later, during the Byzantine era, Caesarea retained its importance and became the capital of Palestina Prima, a province on the Mediterranean coast. But in the 7th century, the port was taken over by Arab invaders. And that was just the beginning of a violent back and forth between Muslims and Crusaders that would last for several hundred years. Eventually, in the mid-13th century, Caesarea was destroyed by Babersai, a sultan of the Mamluk dynasty. After coming to power in Egypt, these rulers had swiftly taken for their own the regions known as the Crusader States, kickstarting a lengthy and largely peaceful reign that would last until the 16th century. When the Mamluk dynasty eventually gave way to the Ottoman Empire, Caesarea remained a shadow of its former self, a crumbling port half forgotten on the fringes of Palestine. Then, in the late 19th century, the village of Caesarea was founded on the remains of the ancient city. By 1945 there were around 1,000 people living in the area, the vast majority of whom were members of the Muslim faith. Then, in November 1947, civil war broke out, pitting Jewish settlers in the region against the local Arabs. And in the ensuing violence, most of Caesarea's residents abandoned the village. Today, the Roman port of Caesarea serves largely as a tourist destination, with many of its old buildings having been converted into places to eat and drink. But it isn't just vacationers in search of a Mediterranean hideaway who make their way to Caesarea's shores. Thanks to the region's rich history, it has also become a hotspot for archaeologists keen to unravel the long and complex story of Israel's western coast. And it was on one such expedition that experts discovered this startling underwater find. In Israel today, much archaeological research is conducted by the Israel Antiquities Authority. The organization put in place the law of antiquities legislation to protect valuable relics from exploitation. In the 21st century, that means working to excavate and preserve a number of historic sites. As part of their mandate, the IAA regularly conducts underwater research in the coastal regions of what is now Israel. And at Caesarea in particular, they have found a number of interesting sites. 
Apparently, the entrance to the city's harbor is a particularly perilous place for ships, which has led there to be a large number of wrecks. Sometime in late 2021, a team of IAA divers were exploring the waters off Caesarea when they saw something in the depths below. Speaking to the Jerusalem Post in December 2021, Charvet explained, we spotted a broken metal anchor and decided to see if there was more in the area. As the team delved deeper, they saw a number of artifacts scattered along the seabed. On closer inspection, the archaeologists realized that they were looking at two separate shipwrecks with as many as 1,000 years between the sinkings. One, according to reports, was from the Roman era, while the other disappeared beneath the waves sometime in the 14th century, when the Mamluk Sultanate ruled the region. But how had two ships from two such different eras managed to sink in roughly the same place? According to the Marine Archaeology Unit of the IAA, the vessels may have been seeking shelter from an oncoming storm when wild weather forced them onto the rocks. And instead of reaching safety, the crews found themselves struggling in rough seas. The ships were probably anchored nearby and were wrecked by a storm the official statement read. They may have been anchored offshore after getting into difficulty or fearing stormy weather, because sailors know well that mooring in shallow open water outside of a port is dangerous and prone to disaster. Surprisingly, the wrecks were only 13 feet below the surface of the water, making the archaeologists' excavation a relatively simple job. But nobody could have predicted what the IAA would fish out of the Mediterranean off the coast of Caesarea. From the two ships, reports claim, a veritable treasure trove of historic artifacts emerged. From the Roman vessel, divers retrieved hundreds of coins forged in silver and bronze, dating from the middle of the 3rd century. According to Charvet, the ship may have started its journey in Italy, on the other side of the Mediterranean Sea. But whether it was carrying its valuable load to or from Caesarea might never be known. And the coins were far from the only riches found on board the Roman vessel. As divers explored the wreck further, they retrieved a great number of artifacts, including some small statues. One, it seems, was supposed to be a dancer, while the other was modeled after an eagle, likely a symbol of the Roman legion. Intriguingly, divers also retrieved an unexpectedly large number of bells from the Roman wreck. Of those Charvet said, it is possible that the sailors used them to fish with fishnets during the night, or maybe they were part of the cargo and were goods to sell. Elsewhere, others have suggested that the objects may have been used as a charm against evil spirits. The wreck yielded all manner of fascinating artifacts, from Roman pottery to an ancient inkwell and much more. But perhaps the most exciting finds of all came in the form of rare gemstones, hidden beneath the ocean's surface for nearly 2,000 years. According to the statement, these may have belonged to the people who sadly went down with the ship. One of these is a precious jewel in a brilliant shade of red, engraved with a lyre motif. Dating back to ancient Greece, this stringed instrument was sometimes referred to as David's harp and holds a special place in Jewish mythology. According to experts, the gem may have initially formed part of a ring. But the real star of the show, it would appear, is another ring this time a thick piece forged in an octagonal shape from solid gold. Set into the band is a glittering green gem bearing an image that will be recognizable to many a tunic-clad figure with a sheep hoisted behind his neck. To Christians the world over, this image is known as the Good Shepherd, an early description of Jesus in the Gospels. Essentially, it's an analogy that paints the figure as a benevolent herder, guiding humanity in the right direction. And as such, it is regarded as an important early symbol in the development of the Christian religion. It's likely, then, that whoever this ring belonged to was an early proponent of Christianity, which was spreading across the Roman Empire at the time. Were they perhaps traveling to Caesarea, keen to settle amongst fellow followers of this emerging religion? Or setting forth from the port in order to spread the word of Jesus Christ? Unfortunately, we will probably never know the full story behind this ring or any of the other artifacts found on board the wreck. But what of the second ship discovered on the bottom of the Mediterranean off the coast of Caesarea? According to reports, this Mamluk-era vessel also sank while carrying a valuable load of coins. This time, the coins dated from the 14th century, back when the Mamluk Sultanate had control of the region. 
By then, Caesarea had experienced something of a fall from grace and was no longer a bustling city at the heart of a sprawling empire. Instead, it had become something of a backwater. At the time, Caesarea was not an important center anymore Charvet told the Jerusalem Post in December 2021. The Mamluks did not really have ships or a fleet, and they were worried that the Europeans would come to wage war from the sea, so they destroyed many ports. So far, though, experts have been unable to pinpoint the exact origins of the mystery wreck. This treasure, reports claim, amounts to more than 550 silver coins, some cut into a ribbon-like shape. And like the Roman era finds discovered at the same site, they paint a picture of a certain point in Caesarea's long and checkered past. But now, archaeologists hope that further excavation will reveal even more about these long-lost wrecks. According to Charvet, the team are still unsure whether or not any wooden pieces from the ships themselves might still be lurking on the seabed. What they have found, though, is a number of metal relics, including the shattered anchor that first gave away the location of the historic vessels. In the statement, experts noted that the object is made from iron and that it had managed to resist great force before finally breaking into bits, most likely as the result of a storm. Meanwhile, alongside the anchor, divers found a collection of nails forged from bronze, as well as pieces of discarded lead piping. As archaeologists examined the artifacts, a great storm perhaps not unlike the one that sunk the ships off Caesarea descended on the region. Dubbed Carmel, it tore through Israel, Cyprus, and Greece in December 2021, leaving a trail of havoc and destruction in its wake. And in the resulting chaos, four people lost their lives. For a while, at least, Storm Carmel would have prevented any curious observers from taking a closer look at the wreck sites off Caesarea. But according to Charvet, the upheaval could actually prove beneficial to the dig in the long run. After all, violent weather causes strong currents and disrupts the sand, which is ideal for revealing any long-concealed secrets beneath the waves. We are planning to go back to the site as soon as the storm passes, Charvet told the Jerusalem Post. And it won't be the first time that inclement weather has proved surprisingly beneficial to the IAA. Back in December 2010, you see, a similarly vicious tempest struck Israel, creating waves over 50 feet in height. Just like Storm Carmel, this period of wild weather caused great upheaval along the coast of Israel, dislodging vast swathes of sand on the seabed. And according to the Jerusalem Post, this movement sparked something of a boon for the country's underwater archaeologists. In fact, it led to some of the IAA's most prolific excavations yet. Among the artifacts found after the 2010 storm was a sword dating back to Crusader times, found off the coast of Carmel, near the city of Haifa. Meanwhile, in Caesarea, archaeologists discovered a record-breaking cache of gold coins from the era of the Fatimid Caliphs, who ruled the region before the Mamluk Sultanate took power. Charvet says the abundant layers of sand on this section of the coast create the ideal conditions for preserving artifacts. Speaking to the Jerusalem Post in October 2021, he explained, it created an anaerobic environment, which kept them much better than if they had been exposed to higher levels of oxygen. Moving forwards, it seems likely that there are even more treasures waiting to be discovered off the Caesarea coast. In a December 2021 statement from the IAA, Director Eli Esquizito said, Israel's coasts are rich in sites and finds that are immensely important national and international cultural heritage assets. They are extremely vulnerable, which is why the Israel Antiquities Authority conducts underwater surveys to locate, monitor, and salvage any antiquities. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.